so today we will read about the acute rheumatic fever and we will try to end our discussion in just a single page so first talking about the acute rheumatic fever we will first talk about the pathogenesis of the acute rheumatic fever so if we see the pathogenesis of the acute rheumatic fever the pathogenesis involves a child of 5 to 14 years of age because the children between the 5 uh, between 5 to 14 years of age are the most commonly affected age group with this acute rheumatic fever talking about the pathogenesis so pathogenesis has got two most important theories for the acute rheumatic fever one is the autoimmune theory and the other one is the cytotoxic theory so coming to the autoimmune theory according to the autoimmune theory during infection with the group a streptococcus what happens that the antibodies are formed against the m protein of the streptococcus we know that in the cell wall of the group a streptococcus which is also called as the streptococcus pyogenes has m protein which acts as an antigen for the or a virulence factor for the streptococcus pyogenes and in whenever an antigen uh, or a bacteria enters inside the body then the body tries to produce the antibodies against the antigens or against the virulence factors of the bacteria so m protein is also a virulence factor of the streptococcus pyogenes and hence the body produces antibodies against those m proteins but uh, the point of fun here is that the m protein uh, has certain similarity with certain proteins in the human body as well which are present in the cardiac valves in the joints and on and all so what happens is that uh, when the anti when the body's is, body is producing the antibodies against the m proteins of the streptococcus pyogenes the antibodies fail to differentiate between uh, the m protein of the bacteria and the similar protein which is present in the cardiac valves and in the joints and hence it attacks on the uh, it attacks on the human antigens or the human proteins which are present in the joints and the heart which has similarity with the m protein and that leads to damage of the heart valves so this is the pathogen autoimmune theory of the pathogenesis of the acute rheumatic fever theory, uh, acute rheumatic fever now coming to the cytotoxic theory so in the cytotoxic theory what we see is that the streptococcus is producing toxins and the enzymes and these toxins and the enzymes directly cause the damage to the heart valves but this theory uh, has not has not got uh, so much of importance as the autoimmune theory and the autoimmune theory till date is most accepted theory for the acute rheumatic fever pathogenesis now coming to the features of the acute rheumatic fever so uh, in the features of the acute rheumatic fever what we see is that it is a multi-system disorder it does not involve a single system it involves multiple systems like the heart uh, skin joints and all so it involves multiple systems and it occurs due to a autoimmune reaction it occurs in the people who are previously affected with the beta hemolytic group A streptococcus. So, if a person or if a child is infected with the uh, streptococcus pyogenes in his child, uh, I mean, in 5 to 14 years of age, then in the chances of getting the acute rheumatic fever or the rheumatic heart disease in future increases for that child. In other words, it is very important for that child to have had the uh, the infection with the group group a streptococcus for developing rheumatic heart disease in future if a child has got uh, if a person has the uh, rheumatic heart disease then he must have the infection with the group a streptococcus in his childhood now what are the structures uh, which are in uh, affected in the rheumatic fever the most important is the heart then joint skin and brain these all are the structures which are affected in acute rheumatic fever out of which the manifestations of the joint skin and brain these manifestations resolved completely but uh, the manifestations or the damage which occurs to the cardiac valves cannot be resolved and this finally lands up into the rheumatic heart disease okay which is a very fatal condition also so that finally leads to the rheumatic heart disease as the damage to the cardiac valves cannot be resolved now coming to the 
clinical manifestations of the acute rheumatic fever so the most important clinical features of the acute rheumatic fever are the migrating polyart polyarthritis that means arthritis will be there and the arthritis will not be static to a single joint rather it will move from one joint to other joint and one more uh, very important feature is that it will involve larger joints small joints are not involved in the acute rheumatic fever rather larger joints like the knee joint elbow joint okay ankle joint these all are joints which are in, uh, affected in case of the acute rheumatic fever and the uh, and the arthritis does not remains uh, with a single joint rather it moves from one joint to other joint okay hence it is called as migrating and poly means it involves multiple joints hence poly arth hence it is called as migrating polyarthritis other than that we have valvular damage which is a hallmark of the acute rheumatic fever then myocardial inflammation because of which there is prolongation of the pr interval during e in the ecg in the ecg and there is subcutaneous nodules which are seen over the bony prominences erythema marginatum which are the pink macular rashes seen uh, in cases of the acute rheumatic fever and also chorea this chorea has got a, a very unique name that is called as sindenham's chorea this in the ham scoria uh, cause in which we see the involuntary movements now how will we diagnose these are the clinical features but how will we diagnose the acute rheumatic fever so diagnosis in case of the acute rheumatic fever is uh, based on uh, is clinical diagnosis rather okay and uh, for diagnosis we have got a jones criteria and if jones criteria is fulfilled then we can say yes it is a case of acute rheumatic fever and acute uh, in the jones criteria we have got some major uh, major criteria and some minor criteria so if two major criteria is present then we can say it is acute rheumatic fever or one major criteria and two minor criteria are present then also we can say it is a acute rheumatic fever so major criteria are pancarditis arthritis chorea erythema marginatum and subcutaneous nodules how can we remember these major criteria so you can remember by the name of uh, the criteria itself so j o n e s jones criteria so j o means joints joints means involving arthritis n means nodules nodules means subcutaneous nodules E means erythema marginatum, S means Sydenham's chorea, and uh, criteria. Criteria in criteria we have C. C means carditis, so we see pancarditis. So by Jones criteria itself, then by the name of the uh, criteria itself, we can remember the um, the major criteria of that Jones criteria, and the minor criteria are the arthralgia, hyper pyrexia esr will be raised crp is raised and the pr interval is also raised coming to the treatment of the acute rheumatic fever so treatment is by penicillin uh, which is drug of choice for 10 days it is given how can we prevent the acute rheumatic fever so prevention is uh, primary prevention and second prevent primary prevention is if someone has got group a streptococcal sore throat then it should be treated within nine days of onset with, with the penicillin to prevent the acute rheumatic fever in future and for prevent secondary prevention to prevent recurrence we have to give im penicillin g every four weeks so this is all about the acute rheumatic fever